The crisis in Gaza escalated last week as Israel stepped up its assault and the civilian death toll in the Gaza Strip rose past 1,000. This despite the United Nations Security Council issuing a binding resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire. In the name of humanity and international law, this resolution must be observed. A fair request by the Secretary General. Israel's response? bombing the UN's Gaza headquarters. Remember how journalists were criticizing Israel for not allowing them access to Gaza? Israel's response to that? Bombing the Press TV headquarters in Gaza. Press TV and Al Alam, our Arabic sister ta uh, channel, their buildings inside Gaza have been targeted. Is Israel's continuous targeting of journalists. In this conflict, in the last 20 days alone, four journalists have been killed. Way to make a point, Israel. And it turns out that what Israel can't bomb, they can control. In a speech in southern Israel on Monday night before regional leaders, Olmert said 10 minutes before the UN vote, he demanded to speak to US President Bush immediately. Bush was making a speech about education at the time. I said, I don't care. I have to talk to him now. They got him off the podium, brought him to another room, and I spoke to him. I told him, you can't vote in favor of this resolution. He said, listen, I don't know about it. I didn't see it. I'm not familiar with the phrasing. I told him, I'm familiar with it. You can't vote in favor. He gave an order to the Secretary of State, and she did not vote in favor of it. A resolution she cooked up, phrased, organized, and maneuvered for. She was left pretty shamed, abstaining from voting on the resolution. Shh! It's going to get really hard for America to say it isn't controlled by Israel if you keep saying stuff like that in public. So while Israel bombs and threatens anyone who criticizes it, Foreign Minister Zippy Livni has been continuing her public relations work trying to provide the Israeli side of things. Israel decided to accept a few months ago a truce that was initiated by the Egyptians and was violated on a daily basis by Hamas by targeting Israel. So Israel's the aggrieved party then, right? Hamas started it, right? Right? The reality and the truth is that the side that broke this truce and this uh, ceasefire was Israel. Two months before it ended, Israel started attacking Rafah, started attacking Khan Yunis, and never lifted the blockade on Gaza. I've checked with some of the folks here at our international desk, and I went to them and asked, what was he talking about, and do we have any information on that, which they confirmed two months ago. This is back in November. There was an attack. It was an Israeli raid that took out six people. Now, let me refer you. It's not just us. We checked in other periodicals. Johnny, go over my shoulder if you can. Here we go. Uh, the six-month ceasefire started coming apart at the beginning of November after Israeli commandos killed a team of Hamas fighters during a raid on a tunnel they suspected was being dug for kidnapping of Israeli soldiers. That raid set off more Palestinian rocketing. Does no one tell the truth anymore? Anybody? while making a distinction between the way in which we address terror in Gaza Strip and simultaneously trying to help to ease the life of the population. Who's going to take this? Anybody? Anybody? Anyone? Anyone's going to take this? The Red Cross had to walk one kilometer to reach these people. Your soldiers prevented them getting their ambulances in. Your soldiers forced the Red Cross to get these people out, starving children on a donkey cart. Come on, Zippy, say something reasonable, won't you? Something, anything. Hamas is not a member of the United Nations. Hamas is not seeking or trying or thinking about accepting the rules of the international community. Hamas doesn't share the same values that we all share as part, as members of the free world and the international community. Hamas doesn't wash its hands before eating. Hamas doesn't put the toilet seat down when it's done using the bathroom. Okay, so Hamas is evil. We get it. That's the point that they're trying to make, right? One slight problem with all of this, though. You know, Hamas, if you look at the history, you'll find out that Hamas was encouraged and really started by Israel because they wanted Hamas to counteract Yasser Arafat. No wonder Israel doesn't fact check when it comes to making statements. They'd have to bomb themselves, even. And on that note, it's time for a short break. Now, back after this.